Hi, NARC Troopers. Tonight, I want to uh, talk to you about um, world events and how um, we can see our recovery from narcissistic abuse in the midst of those world events. Um, you know, and, and there's several parts of that. So the first part uh, I would like to speak to is about war and what's happening in Ukraine and possibly um, uh, throughout Europe. Uh, I have a, a child, an adult child who is an expat who has lived in Europe for almost five years and the war is very close to her. So that gives it a new um, meaning for me. Um, but even if she weren't there and I didn't have that, um, you know, specific um, connection to this, I think I would still be disturbed by what's happening there. Because we know that um, Vladimir Putin is a narcissistic psychopath. It's very obvious. Uh, they, people have called him a demigod, um, a megalomaniac, many different things, but above and beyond all of that, well, maybe not above and beyond, but in addition to that, um, he's a narcissistic psychopath. Every action, every decision spanning decades that he has been in power um, tend to reinforce that um, that theory, that that's what he is. So, <clears throat> so you have a narcissist, a psychopath, who is, um, you know, every scenario that he plays out with practice, I think once a year they do the goose step and shoot off a, some kind of something, not fireworks, but we're talking weapons, as, as uh, preparation or training for what might uh, be coming, which is here. It has arrived. We have, I mean, he's opened the door to this new aggressive um, venture where uh, he shows zero empathy for human suffering. He's committing war crimes, crimes against humanity. Um, you know, it, it, you know what's happening, so I don't need to dwell on that. What I do want to dwell upon is that, um, you know, he, ima okay, here's what I want to dwell upon. Imagine your narcissist had nuclear weapons. And no matter how uh, much of the hero victim that they paint themselves to be, the truth is, if your narcissist had that kind of power to push a button and wipe out a country, a city. Um, you know, can we think of reasons that they wouldn't do that? Uh, and I want to name a couple of things. They don't feel fear. So there's that. The, they don't get afraid. They have no fear. The, the whole fear response part of their brain doesn't work. And so they aren't worried about that at all about the, about you know retaliation they also you know they're living in a altered reality state where it's like a fantasy you know you've been in that shared fantasy with them through the relationship and so now you know imagine someone that has that disconnect from reality magical thinking all of that with a nuclear weapon So I think Europe could be in trouble, and ultimately uh, the response from the world will be something that will affect all of us in one way or another, because we have a narcissist with a nuke. <laughs> I think that's what I'm going to title today, tonight's talk, Narcissist with a, with a Nuke. Um, it, it's not good, folks. You know, there's a lot of things you can worry about right now. I mean, climate change is being pushed kind of into the corner because of what's happening with the war and 
all of this talk of, you know, um, Putin had said, this is March uh, 2022, and Putin said just yesterday that any sanctions were an act of war. It looks like he's just wanting to have somebody do something. He's that bully in the schoolyard who's like, come on, you want to hit me, don't you? You just do it. And that would give him license to kill you, <laughs> right? Um, and so I think that that's part of what's going on. So we have that situation. While all of that is going on, you are also in recovery from your relationship with your narcissist. Now, <laughs> let me tell you, I think in some ways it makes you fearless because you have been through mm, something absolutely unspeakably, something nobody understands because it was that horrific. And, you know, as you come out of that, on the other side of that, we have a kind of fearlessness. Like we have been experienced the depths of despair, loss of identity, annihilation. Just It's been an existential crisis in our personal lives, just surviving uh, what happened to us with our narcissist. So I think it emboldens us to some degree. Um, Sam Vaknin made a talk about it this past week and said that one of the dangers after you spend time in a relationship with these folks is when you come out of it that the narcissist has has co-opted your brain and it's not you. You're, you're not you because he's killed you. He's He's killed you. And you're dead. He's dead. It's a graveyard. And to recover, you're going to have to step up and like give birth to yourself from scratch because that person you were um, you know, I don't think she's coming back or, and for you guys out there that were, uh, with a female narcissist, you know, he's not coming back. You know, nobody's coming back. There's no going back words at all. There's only forwards. And in the current condition, you know, the narcissist is in control of your mind. Um, and you've got to figure out how to get them out. Um, you've got to figure out how you're going to do that. I offer some suggestions in my articles that I write for Medium. You can find them at pesqueta.medium.com. Um, I also talk about it in some of my podcasts. I have a podcast channel, NARC, Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Collaborators, NARC Troopers. If you just search podcast, Narc Troopers Pesqueda, that's me, P-E-S-Q-U-E-D-A, you're going to find um, that podcast channel. And I've got over a hundred podcasts to listen to. Uh, I think I've got 170 articles that I've written. That's a lot, 170. That's many pages. And then I've got these YouTube, this YouTube channel. So, if, you know, if you haven't checked out the articles or the podcast, they kind of go together. There, I take the same topic and turn it into a podcast and then just sort of improvise a little bit, but essentially it's the same topic. These YouTube talks are unscripted, um, just what's on my mind, me rambling. Sometimes I get off topic, but I usually try to stick to a message I'm trying to convey to you. And tonight the topic is narcs with nukes, <laughs> narcs with nukes. I want us to all think about that and be prepared for what might follow because um, there's more and more narcissists, like genuinely for real narcissists in the world, in positions of power. We are in trouble on many fronts with impending war. Uh, we have a narcissist with a nuclear program that's just got, you know, he's just itching for a fight. Um, got the COVID thing. That's not over, guys. People act like, oh, it's over. Well, for healthy people, I guess, maybe. Maybe. But, you know, for your grandma, your for your grandpa, elderly people, if you've got somebody with diabetes or cancer or asthma, 
or some autoimmune disease, they're not, a, they're not safe because it's not over. There's still thousands of people getting sick and dying every day. So COVID is with us and it's not over. And for many members of our society, it's kind of like we've just turned our back on them and said, oh, well, guess they're collateral damage because we got to get out there and, and go to the bars and go to happy hour and get our French tips done. We can't, can't, you know, we don't want to get a vaccine. It's scary. We don't know what's in it. I get that, you know. I'm not a big fan of vaccines either, but, uh, you know, you do whatever you need to do to protect not just yourself, but others. And so you've got the whole COVID thing, you've got the climate change thing, which is not going away. And it's escalating, it's picking up speed. And that carries with it tons of stuff we have even yet to see. And then you've got an arc with the noose. And so what is my message for tonight <laughs> to say, oh my gosh, the world is in, is really mucked up. Um, but there's a message that comes with that. We are strong. We're strong because we have um, survived this relationship with someone who has murdered us. They murdered us completely like um, those bugs that fill you with poison and paralyze you and then digest you until you're just dissolved like an acid. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a Breaking Bad moment, you know, that whole dissolving an acid thing of the drug dealers. No, bugs, you know, predators, sometimes you dissolve, they eat you, right? They gobble you up and then you dissolve in acid in their stomachs. Yeah. <laughs> God, that sounds awful. Uh, horrible. I don't want to have that happen to me. Um, so things can get bumpy. So what do we need to do? I was thinking about this tonight. I was thinking it's been two years and eight and a half months. And I am trying to, <coughs> excuse me, regain some sense of, uh, of a life. I'm trying to create one. I'm trying to build myself post 16 years of marriage to a, to a narcissist who really did a number on me. And, um, you know, it has been the hardest thing I've ever had to do, but we have pressing things. So my message is this, you know, in times of war, in times of crisis, um, in times of emergencies that are, you know, like times in history where everything was going to shit, <laughs> right? Um, people don't have the luxury of indulging in normal stuff like grieving and processing and accepting and doing all those things that you need to be doing to get over the relationship with the narcissist. I, I heard a woman, a Ukrainian woman, talking about her 11-year-old son on the news tonight. And the, and the reporter, the journalist, asked her, what about your son? How is he handling this? And, you know, it seems like it's really tough for a child to have to be going through war. And I loved her answer. It was heartbreaking. She said, uh, he's not a child. He's, he's lived with war, with the threat of war, with conflict for eight years there's been stuff going on over here and um, now that this is happening and his father has gone off to uh, fight the Russians he's not a child he's an adult he's an 11 year old grown up who understands everything that's happening the consequences the ramifications what it means to him to the family to the world and I thought that's what happens at times like this during war, during emergencies and crises, is that you don't have the luxury of just having a normal childhood if you're a child. You don't get to keep your innocence. You grow up overnight when the first bomb, when the first missile hits the apartment building next door and people die and you see them coming out, being dug out of the building covered in blood. Your, your childhood ends at that at that moment. And even though all of this is horribly unfair, 
I think that, that you know, and, and I do believe that our recovery is like the most horrible thing probably that's ever happened to any of us. And it has been uh, just horrific to try to overcome it and process it and make sense of it. But I want to add another sense of urgency and message that these are not normal times. We are living in a time of crises. We are living in a time of urgent need for action and for uh, change. We are living in a time where if we don't address those changes, whether it's in the way that we're dealing with COVID or the way we're dealing with climate change or what our response is to this war, if we do not adapt to change and actually have the courage to implement that change, to initiate that change, and to follow that change through, then I think we're in some deep, deep trouble. Deep trouble. I think that this could be uh, a very dark time for humanity, globally speaking. And so for, for those of us who are still struggling to try to, you know, learn about narcissism and try to heal ourselves and try to accept it and, 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 you know, nurse our wounds and reclaim our lives and all of that. I guess in a time like this, we're going to have to make some adjustments. I think we're going to have to just turn our gaze a little to the left and a little to the right. And I think we're going to have to see these things that are urgent, that are a matter of life and death, that demand attention right now. And I think maybe part of our healing can be taking action and doing things, whatever it, whatever conceivable thing you think you can do to be part of the effort to address these something that needs to be addressed in all of this hot mess that is our world right now. I think that it will help us. I think by becoming involved in a movement, in an action, in an effort, in a project, in, in, a, in a group or a community of people trying to do this, that, or the other, that sure, yes, we're still going to be grieving, and sure, yes, we're still going to be struggling to reestablish, to, to like create some new identity for ourselves. It's almost like, you know, we're having to reinvent ourselves from scratch. Yeah, we still need to do all that. But I think that because of everything happening, that that can't be 100% our focus. It will have to be truncated, shortened. Um, it will have to be put on, you know, the spin cycle that is the, the quick one, you know, the, the speed cycle, spin cycle that's going to get your stuff maybe not completely dry, but dry enough in like 15 minutes. Um, maybe we're going to have to go with that and we're going to have to punt and we're going to have to improvise and we're going to have to direct our attention to those things around us that are bigger than this whole narcissistic uh, nightmare. <laughs> uh, because it could be life and death, like I said. Uh, many of these things are. Climate change is life and death. COVID is life and death. And this war is life and death. Narcissism, he's already killed you. And he killed himself a long time ago. So there's no death waiting to happen. It's already happened, past tense. You were summarily murdered in your relationship with your narcissist. They killed you. I don't know if you got that memo, but they did. There are a lot of ways to die. There are a lot of ways to kill a person. And they killed you. They did. You think you're still standing and you're still, your heart's still beating, you're still breathing, but they killed you. And this is a new you that you're trying to get together. So since they've already killed you, past tense, you know, maybe by focusing on the things that are going to kill you next, 
maybe that killed your spirit, your soul, your mind, and all of that. But the things that threaten us could kill our body physically. And then, and then what do you do? Game over. So uh, my message is to think about that. Think about the things that are urgent and pressing, that are bigger, life-threatening things than this whole uh, study and exploration and conversation about narcissists, narcissists, narcissists. They are damaged, broken, mentally ill people who can never be okay. Let me say that again. They are damaged, mentally ill people who are broken and they can never be okay. They killed themselves at a young age and substituted a false self in place of their real authentic self that they murdered. You don't come back from that. They're gone. And that person you were when you were with them, dead. You don't come back from that. You're gone, annihilated, erased, as if you never existed. So let's get up. Let's move on. Let's try to focus, yes, on our self-care and health and recovery, but also on the other things that are much uh, more imminently threatening to our, our lives. Yes, that's what I think. And I think in the process of doing that and figuring out how to help, how to make a difference, how to do something and become involved, it'll be a nice little way to stay busy on our road to recovery. And maybe it will help shape this new identity that we're trying to have. That's what I'm hoping for. So <laughs> a lot of people said to me, uh, when I told them I was moving to California, they said, isn't that where he is? Isn't that where your narcissist, isn't that where your ex-husband is? And I thought, yeah, but the reason he's there is because he's a narcissist and he stole my everything, my mannerisms, my my vocabulary, my, my way of talking, my 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 culture and refinement my um academic uh you know part of me like oh he stole it all and along with him stealing it he stole the part where i was supposed to end up in california at some point in my life so <laughs> you know this is for him it sucks to be you i'm sorry that you're what you are but you know i'm i'm going to go there to try to find not just myself and to try to actualize my uh, thing that I was going to do, but also to try to figure out what things can I do to try to help change the course of events that are leading us towards destruction on three different main areas. And there's others too. There's others, but those are the three that I think are probably the most um, life-threatening to all of us as a civilization um, right now are, you know, war, COVID, and climate change. Not necessarily in that order. So I want to get involved, do some things, do whatever I can, you know, and, um, and in the meantime, maybe I will invent a new me because, you know, I'm not fully recovered. <laughs> I am not free of that and it's been two years and eight and a half months and I'm still working on it guys and you may be working on it too but we can at least stay busy doing something important while we're working on it and that's my message for you guys tonight um stay safe out there much love to all of you keep your faith bye <laughs>